This month marks the 15 year anniversary of K4's presence in the Kosovo region. In this piece, we offer a glimpse of K4 and the United States' role in bringing peace and stability to the area. Before K4 came here, the uh, situation was very difficult. Uh, a lot of people, they were, they were leaving from here, escaping from, from the war. The only hope of people of Kosovo was the United States. It was a, a pretty rough five months here during the, the initial push into, into Kosovo and um, trying to uh, re-establish a safe and secure environment. And we were that initial um, force, much like the, the soldiers today building up in Afghanistan, we were doing the, the same thing here. You think about our weapons control status, you think about that we had Bradleys and tanks. It was really a deterrent presence to, to establish a peace. Um, my platoon, and along with a, another group of individuals, were taken um, via Black Hawk helicopter, and we were airlifted into a civil disturbance. A rock from on, on a hilltop nearby was thrown and hit me in the, the Kevlar. They, they went and stated that the rock was about the size of a bowling ball, and it um, went and cut my forehead open, and I got five stitches. Bringing peace and stability to the Kosovo region was no simple task, but with help from the U.S. partnership, as you can see, progress became a reality. They helped people of Kosovo. They, are, they got engaged in humanitarian action to help out, and they helped out all those people to come back to to their properties, to their lands, so they can continue their lives. Once the peace was established, now we're maintaining the peace, but we're really providing stability to allow the institutions in Kosovo to stand up, and one, to govern their own country, and then two, to join the nations of the rest of the world. And so, you know, we're very close to, I think, transitioning to even a, a different presence. NATO intervention has been the most crucial moment for the existence of Kosovo citizens at that time. The presence of NATO troops through these years in Kosovo was essential in creating a society that we have today, a democratic society with Western values. They have worked very well and they have reacted any time there was a need, and I think that we still need their presence. I think that it is very important because it has brought stability to Kosovo and guaranteed a democratic system in Kosovo. The 15-year presence of Kosovo force has helped to bring peace and stability to a region with a population of almost 2 million people. Reporting from Pristina, Kosovo, I'm Army Sergeant Ricky Perez. Fort Hood's own 238 Cav paratroopers conducted an airborne jump training exercise at Camp on Steel, Kosovo to maintain their skills and keep their jump status current. The cavalry troopers performed the task, making it the first airborne jump in over a decade in the Kosovo region. The 238 Cav Reconnaissance Unit jumpmasters loaded the aircraft to take part in a rare training opportunity for soldiers in a non-combat zone. And this is not necessarily something that we would do here in peace support operations, uh, but because we are a uh, long-range surveillance squadron, uh, we do have to have the ability to do this back at Fort Hood. The airborne exercise gave the paratroopers a chance to practice the necessary skills that will keep them mission ready. The biggest thing is, is just proficiency. You know, it's just like anything else, uh, you know, marksmanship, uh, mobility, drivers training, all that stuff. You just, uh, soldiers need to maintain the proficiency so, uh, you know, everything stays fresh in their brain, muscle memory. The long-range surveillance squadron took to the skies for the first airborne jump the region has seen in over a decade. Reporting from Camp on Steel, Kosovo, I'm Army Sergeant Ricky Perez. One God, forever and ever. Amen. Kosovo Force 18 soldiers hiked on a religious pilgrimage through the hills of the Karadak Mountains to the Black Madonna Church in Letnica, Kosovo for an annual event full of worship, prayer, and celebration. 
The annual pilgrimage brought numerous multinational K-4 soldiers that wanted to support a long-standing tradition for people of different religions and ethnicities in the region. People from different parts of the world, as we saw the nationalities here, they are all here for that intention, to bring that message of love and peace and the love of one another. The multi-ethnic crowds made up of mostly Catholics come every year on August 15th for the day of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The pilgrimage to the Black Madonna Church dates back centuries through world wars and even the more recent Kosovo War. Like all the time um, during the war and during everything, uh, we were praying. We were praying to Our Lady, we were praying to her because we were in troubles, we were in bad times and bad things were um, happening to us. The culturally diverse crowd gathered for a service that included priests from throughout the region to share the word of the gospel and to lead in prayer. A lot of people came here to pray, a lot of people in needs, a lot of people in troubles, a lot of people that have a lot of worries. They come here, they pray, they express everything they have inside. So that's really helpful for each of us. The service also offered scripture reading from K4 chaplains that participated in the annual pilgrimage to the Church of the Black Madonna. The Gospel of the Lord. Reporting from Letnitsa, Kosovo, I'm Army Sergeant Ricky Perez. The Phantom Recon Troopers of 238 Cav performed various tasks while being graded during an Excellence in Cavalry testing event at Camp Bonsteel, Kosovo. The EIC testing helped leadership determine which cavalrymen in their troop currently have the most potential to lead. Cav Scouts are important to the Army as a whole because uh, we're, there, we're there at the tip of the spear and we're out there uh, in a traditional role to be able to find the enemy and to be able to determine where our maneuver forces should go. So basically, putting us in front is going to save the lives of those, uh, those coming forth behind us, uh, whether it's the infantry, uh, infantry or armored forces behind us. The testing spanned a total of three days, challenging the Cav Scouts mentally with tasks such as land navigation and physically with a 12-mile ruck march and a four-mile run. Thanks, man! The Cav Scouts welcome the opportunity to do what they do best. Well, any day you get to go out and uh, train is a good day. I mean, you're not sitting cooped up in the office, and it's my job. It's what I am in this Army. It defines what I'm supposed to be. Cavalrymen must be proficient with their assigned weapons, as well as precisely calling in for artillery support when needed. One, five, over. One tank destroyed, estimated five casualties, over. The 238 Cav Scouts conducted the skill sets necessary to help them improve at their craft. Reporting from Camp Bonsteel, Kosovo, I'm Army Sergeant Ricky Perez. Identify the areas that you need to train more in. Soldiers of the 759th EOD Company out of Fort Irwin, California, performed vehicle-borne IED or V-bid procedures on Camp Bonsteel, Kosovo to refresh their team leader skills. The procedures included assistance from the 615th Military Police Company and their K-9 unit as they cleared the way for EOD's first responder to investigate the scene. It's a PackBot. It's made by iRobot. It's uh, good for like this type of scenario, a V-bit type scenario, because it's got a two-stage arm. You can reach it into windows and get it inside the vehicle and get a better view. After they provided reconnaissance on the vehicle using its cameras, the EOD soldiers used the PackBot's claw to enter the V-bid remotely. This procedure allowed the soldiers to investigate the interior from a distance, giving them standoff in case of a functioning IED. The last procedure, however, required a human soldier to get involved wearing an EOD-8 bomb suit built to help resist an IED explosion. With the bomb suit on, the EOD tech could accomplish further tasks to help in neutralizing the threat. In order to be as safe as possible, we like to do everything remotely, and uh, either by robot or rope are the best ways to do that. So uh, right now what I'm trying to do is uh, uncover my main charge using the rope, just in case there's any booby traps or anything hooked to it. The V-bid scenario procedures also included an actual physical search of the vehicle to assess the EOD tech's skill level under pressure. Reporting from Camp Bonsteel, Kosovo, 
I'm Army Sergeant Ricky Perez.